Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Keenan Lambert. In this video, we are going to go back to Cuba. In this video, I'm going to be discussing something that hits very, very closely to my heart. Something that I've seen on the ground. Racism in the country of Cuba. Here we go. Under the Spanish, Cuba was a major player in the slave trade. Cuba imported thousands of African slaves in order to facilitate the operations of plantations as well as needs in the urban industries. After that initial group that came from Africa, there were additional migrants that were invited from different areas of the Caribbean to participate mainly in the sugar industry as well as other industries in Cuba. It's for that reason why about 4% of Cuba's population can still speak Haitian quail. Although the Spanish and American War would allow Cuba to earn its freedom, Afro-Cubanos still suffered under the rule of their fellow Cubanos. And then came our guy Fidel Castro Ruz. In 1959, Fidel Castro's revolution would sweep across Cuba and would end the dictatorship of Fulgencio Batista. Originally, one of the reasons why Afro-Cubanos were so pumped up and charged for the Cuban Revolution was because they believed that it would address some of their concerns related to a reality that they were living every day as second-class citizens in their own nation. The Castro's administration would provide access to education and healthcare with which Afro-Cubanos did not have access to previously. However, the administration did nothing to cure the minds of white Cubanos who controlled industries in Cuba for a long time. A key piece of Castro's agenda was housing reform. This gave poor Cubanos of all races access to housing. However, in the present day, due to a lack of funds for maintenance and upkeep, many of these homes continuously collapse, killing Cubanos. Unhappy with the direction of the Castro administration, nationalizing industries that were traditionally owned by Americans, many Cubanos opted to leave Cuba for the United States, Spain, Canada, and other nations. And amongst those Cubans who left primarily were white Cubanos, Cubans of majority European descent. After the conclusion of the Soviet period in Cuba, so right about until the 1990s when the Iron Curtain fell, Cuba could no longer afford to be a socialist nation in the way how it was in the past. Healthcare and education would still be free, however, Cuba was forced to liberalize its economy. Due to a sharp decline in Russian Soviet subsidies, Cuba would be forced to go on and reinvent its economy. Tourism and remittances would take center stage. Due to the fact that it was majority white Cubanos leaving, those who would end up sending remittances back to Cuba to their family members would also be those same very white Cubanos. Okay, so say you take a family of a black police officer, you take a family of a white police officer, and they're both making the same amount of pesos. So they can afford more or less the same amount of items, okay? When you add a layer on top of it where the white Cubano is receiving remittances from his brother or his cousin in Miami, over time it creates a society where this white police officer is going to have much more than the black police officer. Theo Pepe lives in relative comfort in Centro Havana. He has three sons abroad. Meanwhile, our favorite Cuban grandfather, Mr. Jefferson, has no one abroad and lives in hot squalor in Cayo Hueso. Well, actually, he's got me and some of you great folks in the comment section. And traditionally, before inflation, government employees in Cuba were making somewhere at about maybe $30, $30 equivalent in a month. Due to inflation, Cuban salaries have dropped to, on average, below $15 a month. Online, you'll see that there is a 24 to 1 equivalent, Cuban peso to American dollar. However, in actuality, the way how it's traded on the ground is something completely different. 
at Cuban cash houses, you could receive Cuban pesos at 130 Cuban peso to one US dollar. However, on the ground right now as I'm speaking, the Cuban peso is traded 315 to one US dollar. And this unfortunately nullifies the reforms that were made by the current Cuban administration. Currently, the industry that pays the most and that is the most available for Cubanos is jobs related to tourism. And it's for that very reason that Airbnb owners end up making some of the most money in Cuban society. But for those of you that have gone to Cuba, okay, how many of you have ever experienced a black host? <laughs> Due to a long tradition of discrimination in Cuba, many Afro-Cubanos use the arts in order to earn forms of currency. Now, many of us people of African descent from the Western world go to Cuba and we feel like we're experiencing this different society where our color, our identity is something that's celebrated. However, it's important that we go ahead and we actually speak to a local Afro-Cubano to see how they feel and what their experiences in their world look like. You know, I've actually heard an argument used by Afro Latinos that, oh, in Latin America, color doesn't matter, and you know we're all Ecuadorian, or we're all Dominicans, right, or we're all Colombianos. Yeah, but that does nothing to address, or that actually says nothing about the inequality that's real, something that's affecting people on the ground. When you look at the majority of the upper class what does that class look like and that tells you everything that your society is actually about now one of the chief ways how Cubanos actually make money is by opening up private restaurants and private Airbnbs well how do you gain capital to do so if you're only making thirty dollars a month one of the chief ways how Cubanos actually get businesses started is through those very remittances that I mentioned so just so that I don't mince my words and I say this very clearly, it is the remittances of white Cubans that have left and gone abroad, those who had traditionally more access in Cuban society, that has created a... A society where 98% of the businesses are owned by white Cubanos, leaving only 2% to be fought over by black and mulatto Cubanos. When I was actually thinking about doing this video, I reached out to a brother who does tours in Cuba. It's probably actually somebody that you know. And I asked him, hey, have you ever experienced any racism in Cuba? And he remarked, absolutely. As he was conducting his tours, he would go to some of the more upscale neighborhoods in Havana. He would go ahead and pick them up in Miramar or head off to Vedado and pick up his customers, Americans, Canadians, etc. And initially, he is met by the host of these Airbnbs who tend to be white with so much skepticism and they would ask him questions about his background etc etc and he feels that had he had been a white Cuban right these situations would not happen to him and I actually experienced something a little bit similar when you go to Cuba okay you often find a similar thing that you find in other Caribbean islands okay despite them having this knowledge of their Afro roots okay many of them still do have a sort of crisis of confidence okay they suffer from lower self-esteem because in their society to a degree they're treated like second-class citizens now it's not coming from the government however it's happening in private spaces and then it's the private sector that is fueling cuba economically okay whether that private sector is legal or in the black market See, I really do feel for Afro-Cubanos as many of them have gone through the process of getting their education. And when they've gotten their education, then they've moved off into the job world and then there isn't a salary that's there that can sustain them. Meanwhile, their counterparts, right, could it maybe not do so, right, maybe not work as hard in school, right, graduate and then still earn more money because they're getting remittances from their cousin in Miami or from their cousin in Barcelona or from their cousin in Montreal. Now imagine yourself as a Cuban, maybe you aren't as brilliant, 
right? So you don't have the patience to sit through four years of university. So instead, you take to the streets. You might hustle tourists out of their money in one way or another, okay? A popular way is inviting them into a restaurant and then the restaurant has a deal with you, so you go ahead and they charge them double for the meal or maybe triple for the meal, and then the restaurant keeps some and then you keep the other piece, right? And just with that one hustle, potentially, you've already made more than the supervisor at a physical therapist's office. Or imagine yourself a young lady, right? Maybe you live in some of the urban ruins in Centro Havana, close to the Malacone. And maybe you're not so good at math, you're not good at science, you detest history. So you go ahead, you go out to the Malacone and you look for foreigners, right? Maybe you are somebody who is selling your body, okay? Or, or in a less direct form, right? You are skilled in getting boyfriends who will send remittances to you. Oh. I actually did a video on this topic. It's actually earned a lot of views with single, generally single mothers actually bearing the brunt of the economic situation in Cuba and many women electing to go out and, and actually selling their body in order to make money. The Cuban economic situation is getting worse and worse every day. Okay, those same subsidies that existed during the 80s don't exist today. And many Cubans are often have, are forced to hustle in order to make ends meet. Even my friend who has gone to university Right, and is currently the supervisor of a physical therapist's office, she is forced to actually care for individuals after work. So she would maybe provide massages or other services to individuals that have family in Miami. Or there are some tourists that come by and they request massage services. Who, kn who knows the ungodly things that she's had to do or things that she's seen or things that she's been propositioned with just because she's not earning enough money. For the Airbnbs, many other hosts actually are, again, white Cubanos, okay? And they are primarily the ones who are getting those tourist dollars, okay? Say maybe you're a white Cubano, your name is Enrique, your cousin Jose uh, left this place, right, and went off to Miami, okay, went through Mexico, or rather Nicaragua, is I think that's a popular way now, Nicaragua, Mexico, creep around through Texas, and then boom, you're in South Florida. He's left you his keys. What are you going to do with the space? Okay, turn it into an Airbnb. Use the money that he's sending you as remittances to make the place nice. Okay, then you go ahead and use a foreign account in order to link it to the Airbnb. And then you have folks come down, spend a night in the place. Maybe it's 20 bucks a night. Okay, as I said previously, the salary for many Cubanos right now due to inflation is $15 a month. And just in one day, you've earned more than your counterparts that maybe you went to school with just off of your cousin Jose's place. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Okay, thank you for listening to my nonsense. Um, please do comment in the comment box below on things that you've seen, maybe in Cuba, maybe in some other country that you visited. Thank you so much for watching once again. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.